this is part two. This episode had a lot going on. This episode was 55 minutes long, so I had to go ahead and break it up into two. Uh, <laughs> I had to go ahead and break it up into two little um, videos for y'all because on this video, I'm going to talk about Emmett and Tiff's relationship, Ronnie and Miss Ethel, and then we'll get into Papa and Maisha. And then that 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 recaps the whole episode, y'all. So hey, how y'all doing again? How you doing again? It's still Sunday, y'all. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Let's get into it. So in this episode, Emmett is um definitely fired. He's definitely fired from Sonny's. And I hope that doesn't put Sonny's character out, out of the picture for the rest of the um season because there's really no point. There's no there's nothing left for Sonny to do. Em is no longer working in his restaurant. Sonny was barely in the picture this season anyway. So that pretty much puts away his character anyway. I mean, there's still opportunity to bring his character back because his brother still has some unfinished unfinished business um about finding who murdered his son, Jason. So, um, yeah, Emmett is definitely fired. So, um, we find out why Tiff is actually selling weed. So, Hannibal, with his fine self, y'all, I am like, I have, a, I have a crush on Hannibal's character, okay? I like Hannibal's character because, um, he's a little hood, you know, he's an entrepreneur, you know, he's spiritual, he's tall, he's dark, he's handsome, he's got a great smile, he's well-traveled, he's health-conscious. I, I'm crushing on his character. Like, I'm really crushing on dude's character, okay? I'm so glad that Jason Mitchell or Brandon didn't mess it up for everybody because, you know, his uh, girlfriend was taken off the show. There was really no need for her anymore. There was no need for his mom to be on the show anymore. Like, that dude really messed it up for... He messed up a bag for a lot of characters by getting kicked off the show. And I really enjoyed his character on the show. Like, I really wanted him back on the show. You know? It's really... A, if if all the things that they were if people have been saying and all the rumors going around about what Brandon was doing, Jason Mitchell was doing in order to get fired from the show is really selfish of him to do that because he really messed up a bag for a lot of actors on a really good show i was looking forward to seeing what was gonna happen but i'm glad that it didn't stop anything for hannibal even um chris lee even in real life like if y'all follow him on instagram you see he just bought a house you know he's an actor i just was watching his stories today and he was playing the piano and i just was like Um, so, yeah, um, <laughs> I really don't be having celebrity crushes like that, but I really like him. Um, I, li I like what I see of him. I don't know the guy. Um, <laughs> let's just make that clear, because you can like what you see, and it'd be a whole different story. But so far, you know, I he's a musician. I, I tend to like musicians, people who, um... Just creative people, people who have a creative outlet. I really like that about them. Um, and then he, like I said, he just bought a house and everything in real life. We talking about Chris Lee in real life. Um, but yeah, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Why am I smiling like this, y'all? That is crazy. Uh, let's get back on track. Where are we at? <laughs> I had to write it down today, y'all, because I'm going to get these characters' names right if it kills me. Um, I'm all off track. Okay, so let, we talking about... Um, okay, so we're talking about Emmett and Tiff. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about Emmett and Tiff. So Emmett and Tiff, they actually go buy some weed from well we go to see tiffany's plug and tiffany's plug happens to be hannibal so hannibal 
you know, he didn't got his weed business up off the ground when he started in season two. You remember he was growing weed in his basement, growing all those different strands and stuff. He had went over to Southeast Asia and learned a little something and came back. Or was he in Bali? I don't know, y'all. I, I know he's been, I, I, I remember him saying, his character saying he had been a lot of places. And I believe Bali or Southeast and Southeast Asia have been both of the places. So yeah y'all he's growing all this weed don't do that he's growing all this weed y'all hear her talking back to me and he is now selling he is now selling his weed y'all he's gotten up off the ground he's got a legit business going and um so yeah tiffany is in there she's buying weed from him that's her plug that's where she gets all her exotic stuff from and emmett Happens to know Hannibal. Emmett gets into a little scuffle because he's trying to do some business. Emmett always coming up with these business plans on the fly and just putting it out there and just seeing if it'll work. He don't take no time. He ain't, Emmett ain't taking no time to think. He 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 acting on his instincts, which is sometimes a good thing, you know. I ain't mad at him. So after they uh, make a business deal with uh, Hannibal with the weed and everything. Um, they go to, well, Tiff's got some more deliveries to make. So Tiff goes to make a delivery to what I believe is maybe a cancer patient. Because the lady, the psychic, she's a psychic. And I believe she also has cancer. Because she mentions that she's going to pass away soon. And she doesn't want to die with debt. She also mentions that um, she hadn't had an appetite. And that she just spent all her money on her medications. But she does give a prediction that uh, Emmett is going to be a cheater. He's going to cheat. He, she's, she gave a prediction that Tiffany would never be enough for Emmett and that Emmett is going to cheat on her. And Tiffany is upset because she said everything that this lady has ever predicted has come true. Okay. So Tiffany believes it. So, y'all, we're going to see uh, how their relationship goes because their relationship been rocky since the first time she was even in the picture. The first time she appeared on any of these episodes, their relationship been rocky ever since. And so basically that's going on, that's what's going on with Emmett and Tiffany tells Emmett that he needs to get a job at this point she, she said Emmett you better not be cheating on me but uh, most importantly you need to be getting a job so she said he need to be getting to a bag period okay so let's talk about Ronnie and Miss Ethel y'all it was I almost cried Miss Ethel she was so beautiful this season this uh, episode, I knew, I had a gut feeling that this was probably going to be her last episode. Because when she appeared in this episode, her hair was beautifully done. You know, when I turn gray, I want my whole hair. When I turn gray, I want my whole head to turn to turn gray, y'all. Like, I want to look how I look right now. But uh, could y'all imagine that with all gray hair? That is beautiful. I love her hair. I love that it was all gray and silver like that. When it's my turn, Lord, hear my prayer, okay? I want mine to be all long and gray, okay? So, um, she was looking beautiful in this episode. And she did, in fact, pass away in this episode. And she went out with a blast, okay? She was in there with those male strippers living her best life. I, that part was kind of cringy for me. I'm not really into male strippers. Y'all, I'm, I'm I like men. But when it comes to dancers, I can appreciate the female body. I love the female. I love to look at a few. I want to see a female dance. If I want to see a dancer, I like to be around female dancers. I used to work at a club with dancers. I was doing bottle service. And I just, I would some, you know, I would look at the girls. I like the women. I'm not really, uh, um... I, I don't know. It's just something about a male dancer that's just weird to me. I don't know. Like, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it. I just, I don't know. It's a, it's a different vibe that women have and that a female strip club has versus a male strip club. It's just. Do you mind? Y'all, she is on one today. Baby girl is on one. So, yeah, Miss Ethel, she goes out with a bang. And I'm glad that Ronnie 
was able to spend her last moments of her life with her. I feel like his character really needed that. His, I feel his character really needed that, and it was good that uh, Lena wrote it where his character was able to experience that. Um, and that's what really makes me feel like this may be the last season because these characters are just being, they being put away. They being put away, and I hope Keisha doesn't end up being dead in order to end this season. I mean, you know, in order to end the show and cancel the show, please don't. Whatever you do, Lena, don't kill off Keisha. <laughs> I, 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 please don't. Y'all tell me y'all thoughts. What do y'all think? So, yeah. Um, R.I.P. Miss Ethel. R.I.P. Miss Ethel. And y'all, this is about to give. How do y'all think this is going to affect Ronnie? Because Ronnie is very emotional. And he acts off of his emotions too. How do you think this that Miss Ethel's death is going to um have affect him in his search for Keisha because Ronnie knows for a fact he heard Keisha in that house that guy's house when he went to go use that guy's restroom he heard Keisha it wasn't just that tea kettle whistling and the guy if you notice he said that his house was dirty but his house wasn't dirty his house was spotless he also said that uh he also let that tea kettle keep keep whistling while he was putting Ronnie out where that tea kettle was not on in the beginning that guy turned the tv up a little bit and he turned that key uh, tea kettle on to uh, make that whistle so to muffle the sound of Keisha okay y'all remember okay so he muffled in order to muffle the sound of Keisha screaming and trying to escape so I know Ronnie heard that and that's I wonder how Miss Ethel's death is going to recharge him and um, re-energize him to find Keisha. Because remember, that was Ronnie's charge. He said that his grandmother told him that he was going to find Keisha. And Ronnie knows exactly where Keisha is at. He's going back over to that guy's house and he's going to find Keisha. That guy was almost ready to knock Ronnie out. Ronnie was about to end up in the basement. Okay? So... <laughs> So, um, let's talk about Papa and Maisha. So, it is so cute, y'all. It's so cute to see Papa and Maisha's relationship develop. Like, Maisha said she wanted to keep things on the low because it's not everybody's business to be in their relationship. And Papa's like, I want to show you off, girl. I want to show the world that you my girl. And I was like, that is so cute. Even the part when Maisha um, is telling Papa, like, I remember your dad saying that we might not understand the way that God works, but just know that God works, you know? I don't, that, and that's one of my models. Like, I don't know how God works, but I know that he does, okay? So especially that's kind of my my model that translates into me into to me that um this too shall pass people use that mantra. My mantra is I don't know how God works but I know that he does. Okay? So when things are just when I've done all I can do and I'm letting go and I'm letting God, okay? When I when I'm given when I'm in a moment of least resistance, when I let go and let God, I say, "You know what? I don't know how God works, but I know that he does." And that's the end. That's my say la. That's my amen. Okay. So it's really cute that Maisha actually listens to Papa's father. And, um, you know, that's the, that's the bond that Maisha and Papa are forming. And I think her saying that and Papa noticing that she's actually listening to his father is something that really um, turns Papa on in a way, you know. <laughs> I mean... They're kids, but what I'm, you know what I'm saying. If they were adults, that if that was something, if I was in that situation, and somebody actually listened to something that I, someone that I think highly of, and they referenced that, that would be something that to really, um, that that would really make me proud on the inside. That would make me happy on the inside. So <laughs> I thought he was really cute, and um, Papa reveals to us what i mentioned in one of my recaps before papa about um that part where papa questioned his dad and i said that our kids really look up to us and 
They think that we're perfect sometimes. Papa is now coming into his own person. And he says that he's now questioning things. He, When he was younger, he said he believed everything. And now he's saying that he's gotten older and he's starting to develop his own opinions about things. And also him seeing his, uh, his dad take that bribe, I'm pretty sure. Him seeing his dad take that bribe is definitely had a big role in him starting to question his dad and how his dad moves and what his dad says. And um, also with Keisha being missing and not found yet, it's starting to cause Kev, um, it's starting to cause Papa or Stanley, Stanley, it's starting to cause, uh, cause Papa to question um, how God works. Okay, so that is everything from that episode episode six episode six had me high and low y'all it really did i i was into it like y'all i was i was the part where keisha almost got away again i was just there emotionally i was engaged when Miss Ethel died, I almost cried. When Kevin had his birthday party and the music started playing, y'all, one thing about Lena Waithe, whoever is the creative for the soundtrack, I messes with you. Even if, I, I don't know, I gotta look at the credits or look at the whatever for this show and see who is it picking the soundtrack because y'all be picking some wonderful music. If y'all started watching 20s like I recommended, which is also a show that is produced and directed by Lena Waithe. If y'all watch 20s, the soundtrack on that show, I love it. It's black, uh, black artists. She is really supporting black artists. I feel what she's doing except for that part where she had that girl playing that role inside that um, cake place where Papa went and got that cake. That girl, she was horrible. I don't know where you found her, but if you're giving out roles like that, Lena, hook, up, hook me up. Call me. I'm available, okay? I'll play that little role. How much you paying? Listen, fit me in. Fit me in. Fit me in a scene somewhere with Hannibal, okay? I'll play that role. So, um, yeah, y'all. The soundtrack was off the hook. I was I was engaged. I loved it. I loved this episode through and through. Um, the work on it, everything. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, y'all. It's been real. Thank you so much for watching y'all be easy make sure you like comment and subscribe watch all my other show recaps peace